Hey guys, welcome back to another What If, the show where I explore the alternative storylines and realities Wings of Fire might have become. Today I'm doing another one that's been highly requested. What if Clay grew up with the Mudwings? I've already explored what I think would happen if Glory and Sunny grew up in their homes, so it's time to do another Dragonette of Destiny. I don't think Clay's personality would change a whole lot. His core features are still the same, the big brother caring type who looks out for his siblings. I think he'd be a bit more jaded and more tired because of the war, but our Clay isn't changing much. Anyways, with no further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. Clay and his siblings, Reed, Marsh, Crane, Pheasant, Sora, and Umber, grew up in the heart of the Mud Kingdom, far from the battles raging on their borders. Of course, just because they weren't near the armies yet didn't mean they didn't train to join them. Most Dragonettes grew up learning about the war and preparing for the day they would take over the front lines for their predecessors. They learned about the conflict embroiling the entire continent, about their alliances, past and present, and they learned about the best ways to avoid an Icewing's breath weapon or pin a bigger dragon's wings. Outside their lessons, Clay learned different things. Umber was smaller than he ought to be because he couldn't eat some of the food they had. Reed and Crane liked to sneak out and go hunting at night for him. Sora and Pheasant weren't happy with their roles as soldiers to be. Pheasant wanted to be a medic, and Sora wanted to be left alone. Reed worried that Umber was too small to fight. Crane was a fine fighter, but she didn't want to fight another tribe's enemies. Clay only wanted his siblings to be safe, whatever that meant. He didn't hate the idea of fighting. He was big, and fire couldn't hurt him, and Clay was okay with doing what his queen told him to do. He could admit he wasn't the brightest star in the sky. But that was the good thing about having a sibs. Clay didn't have to be good at everything. Crane was clever, and she had a lot of opinions, and no problem sharing them with Clay whether or not he asked for them. Crane warned him that fighting this war would only hurt the Mudwings, and it would only hurt them, too. At her insistence, Clay began to turn the idea that they should avoid the front lines over in his mind. It wasn't like they could just let their commander know that, hey, by the way, we don't think we'd like to join that war after all, since it was required and not a choice and everyone had to. But luckily, they ended up getting transferred just before they turned six, mere months before they would have flown to the Diamond Spray Delta with the rest of their hatchmates and joined the Mudwing Army. Reed had been interested in healing for several years, trailing after the medics whenever he wasn't busy. That and his innate mother hen tendencies meant he was appointed healer's apprentice and sent to the swamps at the southern base of the kingdom, about as far as you could get from the fighting and danger anywhere on the continent. The swamps were nestled between the rainforest and the mud kingdom, and there had never been a battle fought anywhere near there. Hence the reason the mudwings hid most of their injured dragons and medical groups there. Reed began training with the healers while the rest of them worked with the smaller groups of guards working the area. It was an easy job. The scariest thing to be found in the swamps were the giant alligators and huge snakes. For a while, Clay rested easy. His siblings were safe, away from the war and the battles. He knew the statistics, knew that in war almost every sibling group lost at least one dragon by their second year. At night, when the six of them sat around the campfire and laughed and told each other about their day, Clay couldn't help but wonder which of them it would have been. Reed, second oldest, quiet and calm. Umber, tiny but expressive and always ready to cheer them up. Pheasant, quiet and contemplative. Or Sora, who liked to wrestle with Umber and rivaled Reed from Mother Hen Supreme. Or Crane, who was clever and sharp-eyed. Or would it have been Clay to die, leaving his siblings alone to fend for themselves? It didn't matter. For now, at least, while Reed was still training, they were all safe. The rumor started five months after they'd been stationed there. A pair of guards on patrol failed to return. Three days later, their bodies were found in the marsh. It was terrible, but not necessarily a cause for alarm. Incidents happened, things went wrong, sometimes guards got into trouble. They never found out who did it, and no major alarm ever came from it. Two months later, a lone mudwing looking for a certain medicinal plant was found dead in the same way. This wasn't impossible either. The medic had been young and small. A particularly vicious swamp predator could have gotten her. But then, a month later, another mudwing guard went missing and they officially knew something was wrong. One is happenstance, two is coincidence, but three times means enemy action. A pattern which proceeded to continue in the same way for another eight months until they'd lost almost a dozen dragons to the mystery killer. They started going out in groups of threes. It was all they could do at the moment. They couldn't pull troops from the front lines, and they only had so many guards. Clay had trouble sleeping at night, worry for his siblings gnawing at him constantly. Everything fell apart one evening when he was on patrol with Umber and Crane. 
They were almost done, looping back towards the village when they heard the strange noises. Sounds of something large crashing through the forest. Crane and Clay exchanged looks. Let's check it out, Crane said. I got the north one. She picked her way through the bracken to investigate, and Clay took Umber to check out the other sound. A few minutes later, after he lost sight of her, Clay heard a bone-chilling scream. Whirling, he managed to slap a talon over Umber's snout before he could shout. Don't give us away, he hissed urgently, then started running as quietly as he could toward the sounds of fighting. Umber trailed behind him just far enough back that he missed it. Clay ground to a halt at the edge of a small clearing, frozen as he watched a huge black dragon snap his sister's neck. There were two of them. They were massive. Umber came up behind him and Clay found himself able to move again. He spun, dragging his little brother to the ground and signaling him to be quiet. He couldn't... He didn't want Umber to see... He heard a wet thud. Umber squirmed and Clay tucked him under his wing, pressing himself flat against the ground. Both those black dragons were huge. Clay couldn't fight them, and if they got caught, they'd kill Umber. He couldn't lose two siblings today. He felt sick hiding, but Clay couldn't... He couldn't help Crane now. He could only help Umber. There was the low sound of grumbling voices, and then the swishing noise of greenery moving. They were leaving. Clay waited long moments to be sure. Umber got more frustrated and fidgety under his wing. Okay, Clay hissed softly. Clay stood up, muscles sore and cramping. Umber joined him, spines flared. Clay knew that Umber knew what had happened. His younger brother darted into the clearing, letting loose a quiet wail of agony. It made Clay shatter inside a little bit. Lying abandoned, half in the watery mud and half draped over a mossy tree root, was his sister. Crane. Dead. Clay started trembling, but gently he tugged Umber away from the body. Come on, he mumbled. We need to go back. Umber visibly steeled himself, and the two of them gingerly picked up Crane's body. Everyone was shaken after that. Reed's mentor told them that the first sibling was the worst. Somehow that made it even more painful to imagine that there was a first, which implied that there must be a second as well. Everything was stilted. There were only five of them now, where there should have been six. Nobody to advise Clay, nobody to spend an hour ranting about how stupid it was that they were fighting a war in the first place, nobody to help quiz Reed on his memory exercises. A giant, bleeding, sister-shaped hole in all of their lives. The months rolled on and they kept going. Clay didn't stray from his siblings in his off hours, unwilling to let them out of his sight for long. Older Mudwings assured him that the feeling would pass. Clay didn't know that it would. The killings kept happening. It was random, infrequent, but almost regular by now. They never tracked down the black dragons. Nightwings? Or someone painted black? Or Trick of the Light? And there were just more pressing matters to worry about. Clay took more patrols. The more he took, the less his siblings would be out. It helped distract him, too. And he wanted to find the black dragons. He spent a lot of time tracking the places where Mudwings had been murdered. Always the tracks led to the rainforest. Could it be Rainwings? Were they not as isolated as everyone believed? Why start now? What was the trigger? Six months after Crane, he met a Rainwing. Clay was tracking the obvious path left by an intruder, one of the black dragons, when he heard a noise. Before he could act, he felt a pinprick in his neck, and everything went black. Later, when he woke up, he met Glory. She was nothing like the Rainwings he'd grown up learning about. But she was tracking the Black Dragons, too. They joined forces. Clay kept everything a secret from his siblings. He didn't need them worrying over him. But he worked with Glory and a few of her friends, hunting for the Nightwings and the missing Rainwings. They worked with other dragons, too. Sandwings met using an Honest to Moon's magic tunnel. And even one Nightwing, who was in a strange... Something with glory. Eventually they found the Rainwings, and found something else equally shocking. That Nightwings weren't powerful, all-seeing prophets. Just greedy, clever dragons with no sense of empathy. It made Clay sick. It hurt to know Crane and so many others had died just to hide this secret. 
to hide the fact that the Nightwings were planning to invade the rainforest. But they'd found their plan out, and it was only a matter of time now. They had contacts as far as the Scorpion Den, and an easy way to meet them. The news would get out, and things would change. Crane wouldn't have died for nothing. Everything would turn out okay, and the war would end without Nightwing interference. And that'll wrap this up! I had a good time with this. I love the concept of a background vigilante type resistance fighter, and this is a fun taste of that. Their contacts in the Scorpion Den are sunny and keeply, by the way. Remember to check out the description for links to my DeviantArt and Redbubble, as well as my Patreon. And don't forget I have a second channel for commission speed paints as well. Thank you so much for watching, and please have a wonderful week. I work it out, I work it out